I was interested in, we had cloned several genes in the lab and we wanted to know in what cells were these genes active. And at the time, because DNA makes, RNA makes protein, we had a lot of ways of answering the question. We could make a probe to the RNA and if it was made, we'd see it in the cells. Or we could make an antibody to the protein or we could make the gene make something else that we could see and then we could see that it was working. All of these methods worked. They answered the question, but they had a problem. And that problem was, in order to do the experiments, we had to prepare the organism by killing it, fixing it, poking holes in it so the reagents could get inside. And we were therefore only getting a very static view of what was going on. I heard a lecture that told me about this man, Osamu Shimomura. Shimomura shared the prize with me in 2008. And he uh, is an amazing person. At the age of 16, he was told, you have to quit school. You have to work in a factory. So he quits school. He goes out of the city, over the mountains to the adjacent valley, and starts working, which turns out to be good because the city was Nagasaki, Japan, and the time was 1945. And by being on the other side of the mountains, he was protected when the atomic bomb destroyed the city. He has no school to go to after the war. He eventually, the first school they build is a pharmacy school. He goes to that. He, after pharmacy school, he works as a technician. He's given a project that's basically considered impossible by everybody, but he's a very good biochemist. And he's able to do the uh, experiment. And his boss is so impressed that he gives him as a going away present a PhD. He then comes to, uh, comes to the United States and decides that he's going to try to address a very interesting question. Why is it that this particular jellyfish produces light? Why is it bioluminescent? And so he goes to study this, and this is, this is the part that talks about the scientific method. He's trying to figure out how this works. He collects thousands of jellyfish, grinds them up, extracts the proteins from them, and only to find that the experiment fails. And it fails repeatedly. He tries different variations. It simply doesn't work at all. He keeps trying. He has some ideas about changing things. Nothing works. Finally, one evening, it's very late, decides to go home. He throws the stuff in the sink, all the preparations in the sink. He turns off the light. He's about to leave, and he looks back at the sink and he sees that the sink is glowing brightly. And it's glowing brightly because the sink had something that he didn't have in any of his preps. It had calcium. And he uses that, he realizes that calcium's in the seawater. He uses that to purify the protein, which he names after the jellyfish, called a corn. So he has answered the question, how is light produced? But by a complete accident. So I'm listening to a seminar about this, and I realize that this is what I've been looking for for all my scientific career, because if you shine blue light on this, you can see green. So wherever you have a cell make this, you will see it. In other words, it's going to serve as a lantern that will allow us to see things in the cells. We were able to put this into the worms, and here's a picture from the cover of the issue of Science that we reported on this. You'll see that, that there's one long green line at the top. That's one nerve cell. But the one right under it that's sort of shorter, that's actually a growing nerve cell. And we could actually watch the cell growing in an intact animal. And that was very exciting. So I wanted to do this. I sent it. The art cover editor called me up and said, you know, we really like your picture, except we have a problem. And the problem is that there's one color we really don't like to ever use on the cover, and that's green. Can we change the color? I said, no, I'm sorry, it's got to stay this way. <laughs> GFP has been used, we've used in our lab in many ways. It's been used to look at how HIV gets transmitted from one cell to another. GFP has been used to look at various health issues like this, basic biology. But it's also been used, for example, you can put GFP in a bacterium under one of those controlling elements that allows GFP to be made when uh, the explosive TNT is around. Landmines have TNT in them. You don't know where the landmines are, but if you could spray a field with them, as a man named Bob Burledge did, 
and then go back at night with a UV lamp, wherever there were the landmines, he could actually find the fluorescence of GFP. I'm a little over time, so I think I will stop here. Thank you.